All right, thanks for watching. And today, we would like to do another example of the fundamental theorem of line integrals, but this time in three dimensions, just so we can see that it's pretty similar, except with one little twist. So let's evaluate f dr, where f is that vector field, and c is this really weird curve. So just to do a very quick picture of this, I don't think it's quite an accurate picture, but good for our purposes. I think C just goes, um, let's see, something like that. Um, which again, doesn't matter. Namely, the X increases, the Y and the Z thing increase. And what's important here, because we want to do the fundamental theorem, we just need to figure out what the starting point is and the ending point is. Well, the starting point is 1, 1, 1. And the ending point becomes uh, 2, 2 squared, and 2 cubed, which is 2, 4, 8. That's first of all. And then to check that, uh, we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. You have to check that f is conservative. In two dimensions, what you have to do, you have to say pi m is quixotic. So PY equals QX. In three dimensions, it's a little bit harder. If you're my student watching for the midterm in three dimensions, you don't have to check that F is conservative because it uses something from 16.5, but definitely on the final, you would have to check it. And if you're watching my video also, you would definitely need to check it. Namely, in this case, you would have to see whether the curl of f is zero or not. And indeed, it turns out it is zero. So I will skip this for now because the whole point is just to figure out how to use this, a fundamental theorem of line integrals. Okay, then the next step is to find an antiderivative. Namely, check whether or not f is the gradient of some function or not. In other words, can we write yz e to the xz, e to the xz, and xy e to the xz in the form fx, fy, fz? Well, this tells you, yes, we can, but now let's see how to do that. Okay, so fx equals yz e to the xz. What this means is f becomes an, the integral of this of yz e to the xz, but with respect to dx. So be very careful here. So it's e to the xz dx. Now, if I told you integrate e to the 3x with respect to x, you would probably tell me 1 third e to the 3x. It's the same thing here, except now your constant is z. So what this becomes, yz e to the xz over z plus some junk. And that's y e to the xz plus some other function, depending in this case on y and z. And as I said before, this is a bit of a non-traditional method. Uh, because usually it becomes more complicated. You have some function g, and then you differentiate that with respect to y. But in most cases, the examples are simple enough that you can just do it with my method, which is just proceeding. Fy, it's e to the xz. That tells you f is the integral of e to the xz with respect to y. 
this is constant with respect to y, so it becomes y e to the xz plus some drop. So you may already guess what f is, but let's just use fz just to check as well. So it becomes fz is xy e to the xz, which tells you that f is the integral of xy e to the xz with respect to z. So in this case, our variable is z. Dz. So in other words, before we divided by z, because z was constant, now we divide by x, because x is constant. So we get xy e to the xz divided by x plus some junk. And that becomes y e to the xz plus some junk. So, and from now it just becomes more apparent what f is. It's just y e to the xz. And since we just want one antiderivative, we can just declare f to be y e to the xz. It's like this office meme where you say, oh, y e to the xz is an antiderivative, and someone else says, you can't just say that it's an antiderivative. Yes, I declare it to be an antiderivative. Okay, and now the rest is just fun, even though I think the whole thing was fun. So now, the line integral of this really complicated thing becomes the line integral of now the gradient of f. So what we found is that f is the gradient of f, of this, which just becomes, now by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, it's just f of the end point minus f of the starting point. And remember, we started at 1, 1, 1, and we went up to 1, 2, uh, so 2, 4, 8. So what it becomes, it's f of 2, 4, 8 minus f of 1, 1, 1. And that now becomes 4 e to the 2 times 8 minus 1 e to the 1 times 1, which becomes 4 e to the 16 minus e. And that's the line integral. So you see, with no weird parametrization needed, you just find an antiderivative and apply, if you want, the fundamental theorem of calculus, which tells, which tells you that the integral of a derivative is just the difference of f at the end point minus the starting point. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.